What's going on everyone? So I wanted to take just a few minutes today and maybe run through some menswear style fundamentals that at least in my opinion, every guy should know. So I'm gonna cover some basic menswear rules and also some terminology that can sometimes be a little confusing. For example, what's the difference between a blazer and a sports jacket? Can you wear a suit jacket as a sports jacket? And do you always have to match your belt exactly to your shoes? What's a brogue, an Oxford, and what's a derby? And what's the difference between a button up and a button down? And really quick, if you don't know me yet, I'm John. And the entire premise around the videos that I make is to help prove that you are never too old and it's never too late to make a change in your life or start something new. And I'm glad that you're here. Okay, so let's dive in and talk about shoes for a minute because I hear a lot of guys talk about shoes and I see a lot of written comments where people tend to misuse some of the terminology. But let me say this right up front. This isn't really all that important because really we're just talking about clothes and shoes. But let me run through some of the differences when it comes to dress shoes. Okay, let's talk about the word brogue. So brogue or broguing is a word to describe all the little hole punches that are in a shoe. Now, people might call this a brown brogue or just a brogue or an Oxford brogue, but more on Oxfords in just a minute. But one thing that I will say is that the more broguing that a shoe has, the more casual it is, right? It still looks nice, but technically a shoe with like a lot of this pattern is more casual than something without. Okay, now let's talk about the differences between an Oxford and a Derby. And in order to keep this simple and not get into too much about shoe construction, this is an Oxford and this is a Derby. So the Oxford has closed laces and the Derby has open laces. And here's the difference. As you can see in the Derby, I can put my finger all the way up underneath these pieces of leather where the laces go all the way up to the top of the tongue, right? This is all one piece of leather that also includes the tongue. Now the Oxford on the other hand, this is a closed lace system. The tongue is a smaller piece of leather and the bottom of the laces are completely closed off, right? There's no way to put your finger underneath like you can on a derby. Now technically you could really call either one of these a brown brogue, but the derby is this wingtip design and the Oxford is this cap toe design. Now they both have this kind of cool medallion design on the toe and generally speaking, an Oxford is always going to be more formal than a derby. So if you're wearing a suit or something like super dressy, the Oxford would be the better choice. If you're wearing something casual or smart casual or slightly dressed down, the derby would be your better choice. Now, since we're talking about shoes, let's talk about matching your belt to your shoes. And the question is, should you always exactly match your belt to your shoes? And the answer is kind of a yes and no. Let me explain. If you're dressed formally or wearing a suit, for example, the answer is yes. You should be as close as possible with the color and the material. But if you're dressed more casually, you can get away with a less perfect match. Let me show you some examples. Okay, here's some blue trousers with the same brown Oxfords that I showed a minute ago. The belt matches pretty darn close, if not exact. Now, if I wanted to swap out the shoes for maybe something darker, the belt would need to get swapped out to match the darker brown shoes. But let's say you're dressing more casual and maybe you're just gonna wear some boots. The belt should still match as closely as possible, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect match. But the color family should still be relatively close. Now let's say you're wearing jeans with white sneakers. This is my go-to belt. And if you're curious, all the belts I'm showing today are from Anson Belt and Buckle. Anson is sponsoring today's video and the owner, David, runs an amazing family-owned business with customer service at the forefront of what they're all about. And let me just say, every single belt in my closet right now is from Anson Belt and Buckle. And what makes these belts special is this track system with these quarter inch micro adjustments so you always have the perfect fit, even after having all that pasta. The belts come super long and then you cut it with a regular pair of scissors to fit your waist. They come in a ton of different colors and materials like leather, suede, and canvas. And you can choose your own buckle because they're all interchangeable. And they've got some really cool brand new designs. Anson Belt also has a great email signup where you'll get notified of complete belt flash sales at up to like 20% off. However, 
If you join the Anson Text Club, you'll get those same notifications for 30% off. Now they also have a high-end Premier collection that features genuine crocodile and Italian calfskin. Now those are gonna be a little more expensive, but still very reasonably priced for being true exotic materials made right here in the USA. Now occasionally, they will have sales on that collection, so you gotta be sure to sign up for their email list. And for a limited time, they're running a special just for this audience. Click the first link in the video description and get an amazing discount. I would recommend getting the box of three buckles and two straps that gives you like six possible belt combos, all for under 100 bucks. It's very well worth it, and I know you're gonna love these belts as much as I do. Thank you, Anson Belt, for supporting my channel and sponsoring today's video. Okay, let's move on and talk about the difference between a blazer and a sports jacket, because it seems like everybody uses the term blazer for pretty much everything. But again, listen, it's not that big of a deal, but there is a difference. The sports jacket and the blazer are basically jackets that don't have a matching pair of pants. It's a standalone jacket. The sports jacket is usually made of thicker material like wool, tweed, or flannel, and it usually has more texture and pattern than say a suit jacket, which makes it more casual. Now the sports jacket is often called a blazer, but it's not technically the same thing. The one way to tell if it's an actual blazer are the shiny metal buttons in either a gold or silver color. That's the main difference and the obvious giveaway. Most blazers are gonna come in a solid color like a dark navy blue with no pattern whatsoever, unless it's some sort of a country club or regatta blazer. Okay, so let's talk about the suit jacket for just a second and answer the question, can you wear a suit jacket in a casual setting like you would a sports jacket? Technically, no. And the reason is because most suit jackets are made with a much finer material and you can just tell that it's a suit jacket and it just looks off, especially if you try to pair it up with blue jeans. And really quick, one last thing about jackets. Don't forget to cut the little tack stitch on the back vents. It's a very thin thread and it's there to keep the fabric pieces in place during transit and it's your job to cut that when you get it home. So cutting the vents open allows the jacket to fit you better when you move around and sit down. Also, if there's a brand label on the sleeve, that needs to be cut off also. And one last thing that needs to be cut, the breast pocket and the side pockets. These are normally gonna come stitched closed, but they need to be cut open when you get it home. Now, if you're buying a jacket from a menswear store, ask them to remove the stitching for you. Okay, let's rapid fire a couple more of these. So, what's the difference between a button up and a button down shirt? This is a button down shirt because it has a button down collar. Now, this is a button up shirt because it doesn't have a button down collar. And traditionally, the button down shirt is gonna be more casual than the button up shirt. All right, let's talk about coats versus jackets. This is a coat and this is a jacket. Basically, this one's pretty simple because the coat is always gonna be longer length than the jacket. All right, moving on to your socks. Should you match your socks to your pants or to your shoes? The answer, match to your pants. Now, there's gonna be some leeway here on this one because socks have sort of gotten kind of crazy over the last couple years, but I think for the most part, the crazy wacky sock trend has mostly gone away. So when in doubt, match your socks to your pants. Now, one quick thing that I do wanna throw out here because we just talked about coats and jackets is to use the correct hanger. Now, I know some of you guys might not think this is a big deal, but I would strongly suggest investing in coat hangers like these thick ones for all of your nicer coats and jackets. And for pants and trousers, use something like these that are open that have this thick rubber padding that prevents all the creases. I'll drop a few Amazon links down below in the description if you wanna go grab some of these same ones that I have for yourself. But listen, if you made it this far, you are one of the true legends. So please tap that like button and consider subscribing if you're not already because I'm here twice a week. And I also wanna put a video right here on the screen that I think you might enjoy. And with that, my friends, as always, thank you so much for watching, live well, and I'll see you in the next one.